Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm actually coming to you with a book review and that book review is on One Day Like This by Laura Briggs. Um, I want to thank NetGalley and the publisher for a um, an advanced copy for me to read and review for you guys so thank you very much. Um, this book is going to be published on July 17th of 2018 by Book Couture. Um, I highly recommend this book you guys. I gave it four stars. I absolutely loved this book. Now, there are a few things that I want to talk about. I apologize, I did make some notes here so I wouldn't forget anything that I want to talk about. Um, for one, this book is labeled as a contemporary romance novel. I don't feel personally that it was a romance novel. I mean, let me, let me rephrase that. It wasn't your atypical contemporary romance novel where, you know, boy and girl meet and then the course of the book is their relationship. That is not the case with this book. This book, in my opinion, is very much a chick lit novel. Now, I gave it four stars. I loved it. I, I'm not saying that was a bad thing. I just think personally, if you're going into it like I was, thinking that this is your atypical contemporary romance novel, it is not. So the premise of this story, it's about three best, or th three very good friends. Uh, Tessa is our main character and she has had a dream since she was a little girl to be a wedding planner or an event planner, not just weddings, but like engagements and parties and, you know, bridal showers and all kinds of like big events. The book opens up with this adorable prologue of her and her friends like doing like a tea party, but it's an engagement party. And, you know, she's telling her friends they need to drink tea and they need to do this and it's got to be a certain way. And she has this book that she keeps like pictures from magazines of these big events and things like that. And this has been her dream since she was little. And then the book opens up to present day and she's working for like a kids party business where like she has to drive a truck that looks like an oversized dog and she has to you know occasionally wear a costume that requires her to you know have a dinosaur head kind of idea um not what she was looking for so an opportunity comes up and she decides to open her own event planning business and there's a guy who lives in town who is known as the wedding guru he is very very well known very well to do plans these extremely elaborate parties and she heard that he was willing to leave where he currently was to get a position elsewhere. So she asked if he would be willing to join her in this new venture. Because mainly because she wanted the name, like his name attached to this business. She also is running this with her two friends, Natalie, who is a, um, a designer, a, a, a one, a, a, an up and coming designer, I should say. Um, her stuff is fantastic, but she was working for this other designer who wasn't that great. Like this other designer has horrible designs and she kept telling Natalie how bad she was. So Natalie's self-esteem is just shot to, you know, completely shot down. And then there's uh, Amma, I think is her name, A-M-A. She is an Indian girl um, whose family runs a local Indian restaurant and they expect her to get married and work in the restaurant, um, but she has a dream of being a baker. And, you know, she has a little online business where she does cakes and cookies and she does all this after hours using her family's, like the kitchen and the restaurant. So these three friends um, with this guy named Stefan are going to come together to have this business. Well, I don't want to give too much away in terms of plot, but they end up buying this old building, um, this old like house to use as like the headquarters for the business. And the building is, they got it on a great deal, but it's essentially falling apart and about to be condemned. So they hire a contractor and this is our love interest for Tessa. His name is Blake. Now you don't actually meet him until about 25% of the way through the book. So again, not your typical romance novel. Like, this, this book does not focus on the romance between Tessa and Blake, in my opinion. It focuses on these friends and this business um, planning this wedding for this other couple named Molly and, um, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry, Paolo, I think his name is. And it's actually his grandmother, um, Bianca, who wants this very extravagant, you know, she wants the wedding guru. She heard about him from a friend um, who's grandson's wedding it had he had done his grandson's or her grandson's wedding so she wants to hire him she doesn't have a lot of money all of her money is in this little cookie jar that she keeps and she carries around with her you know and she but she doesn't care she will spend every penny she has to give her grandson this elaborate wedding well the problem is is the grandson and his fiance don't want an elaborate wedding they just want a very small and simple not a lot of people there like they don't have a lot of family and so only certain friends are going to be invited so the entire story is, is the girls, um, Tessa, Natalie, and, and, and Emma, trying to come together with Bianca to make her understand 
that just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's necessarily what you have to have. And so the, that's almost the entire premise of the book is them planning this wedding. And it is fantastic. I loved it. I am such a big advocate of weddings not having to be over the top. Um, I will be the first to admit, I am one of those people who loves watching Say Yes to the Dress. I loved watching, if any of you guys remember that TV show that was on TLC, I don't know if it's still on or not, Four Weddings, where they had four people come together and they each went to each other's wedding and then they voted to see whose wedding was the best. And I mean, guys, these were elaborate. I mean, these weddings, and I think it's our society and our culture now, especially celebrity culture with weddings, that they make it be such a big deal. You have to have a limo. You have to have a dress by a certain designer. You have to get married in this, you know, very fancy, you know, um, hotel or something like that. You know, you have to do this, you have to do that. No, you don't. You can do what makes you happy. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, you know, and, and it makes me angry a lot of times when I, when I see this. And I see these girls, because of this culture, because of our society nowadays, that are putting such pressure on having this very elaborate wedding. It's not the way it needs to be. My wedding cost me $5,000 from start to finish. My husband and I paid it all by ourselves. Um, when you're paying for it out of your own pocket, it, you make do. And would there be things that I could have changed about my wedding? Perhaps. You know, yes, I got married in a beautiful little church and I loved it. It was perfect and it was very affordable. Our reception was held in a, um, in the local Polish hall, which is like a, um, oh, what do you call them? Like a legion, essentially, if, if anybody's familiar with that term, in a legion hall. The food was to die for. Oh my God, the food. The building itself, it wasn't pretty. We had, you know, tile floor and cement walls and, you know, it had windows. Um, it was air conditioned. That was a big deal. We got married in July and it was hot as Hades outside. Um, but the hall itself was like half of our budget. And, but the food was amazing. And the food was included in that budget. Now, if I could go back and if I had the money, I think I maybe would have chosen a different location. Now, it wouldn't have been a big expensive hotel. I guarantee you, like I've seen some of these things on Four Weddings or on, you know, on Pinterest and stuff like that, that you see these things. And I've seen people who get married in like a vineyard. I would absolutely do that. Or like a field. That'd be so pretty. A barn. Oh, I would love to have gotten married in a barn and worn cowboy boots. That would have been awesome. But again, you know, like it doesn't have to be expensive. A lot of the stuff can be DIY, which I did myself. So totally getting off topic with the book. But I'm just saying that that's kind of the premise of this book is that they're trying to, you know, talk the grandmother down from these very elaborate, very expensive plans that she has because she feels her own wedding wasn't something that was memorable. But I think what a lot of people nowadays are missing the mark, and I'm glad it was addressed in this book, is it's not about the wedding. The wedding is one day. It's just one day. The marriage is what's the important part. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm not saying, you know, like, do what makes you happy. If you want to run off to Vegas and get married by Elvis, more power to you. I think that's absolutely awesome. Um, you know, but if you do and you have the money to do it and you want that big extravagant $100,000 wedding again, and you can afford it without going bankrupt, by all means do it if that's what makes you happy. But at the end of the day, that's only one day of your life. It's still the rest of your life that you have with your significant other. So, you know, that's kind of what I took away from this book. Now, I do want to say, too, that this is the first book in a series, I think. They didn't say that it's part of a series, but from the way it reads, they really delved into Natalie and uh, Emma's um, personal stories with relationships. So I'm thinking there's going to be more books in the series, and if there is, I'm super excited. It also said at the very, very end of the book, it said, you know, if you want to hear more about Tessa and Blake's story, you know, sign up to the uh, author's newsletter. So I did because why not? Um, I'm all about getting more newsletters. <laughs> I don't get nearly enough in my email. And, um, but yeah, so I'm excited to see where this goes next and where this series takes us. I absolutely recommend this book. I happened to notice on Amazon the other day, uh, for the Kindle, it's on sale for $2. So if you're interested in going ahead and pre-ordering it, please do that. It comes out on Tuesday, like I said, and I absolutely 100% recommend it. Um, if you love weddings, and you love love <laughs> and you enjoy watching friends work together and there is I mean don't get me wrong there is a romance between Tessa and Blake it's just not the basis of the story and it's a really fun relationship I really adored Blake 
and I cannot wait to see more of these guys. So yeah, absolutely recommend. Anyway, guys, that is it. I do hope you enjoyed this review. Um, please let me know in the comments below um, if this is a book that sounds good to you. If you're interested in reading it, are you going to pre-order it? Um, and yeah, until my next video, guys, take care and happy reading. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye.